Hi, I'm going to be talking to you about the Ontario Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks Groundwater Activities in 2020. Um, my name is Heather Brody Brown and you can reach me at heather.brody hyphen brown at ontario.ca. So if you have any questions on this talk in the future or want clarification on information, I can give you the answers or put you in touch with the person who can. So you can contact me at this email address. I'm at, going to be talking um, about the Ontario Ontario's Water Quantity Management Review that I've spoken to you about for the last few years. Um, give you a little information on some updates to the Permit to Take Water program. Um, recent amendments to the Wells Regulation. Uh, updates on the Provincial Groundwater Monitoring Network and the Great Lakes related groundwater research that we're undertaking. So the Water Quantity Management Review, as I've said, I've spoken to you guys on this the last couple years. Um, MECP has been undertaking this review for four years to answer the question, is, is the Ministry's existing water quantity management framework adequate to manage existing or anticipated regional water scarcity considering a changing climate and population growth. Um, this is being done to support the government's environmental plan commitment to ensure sustainable water use and water security for future generations. We've reviewed policies, programs and science tools for managing water takings, assessed water resources sustainability in selected areas to better understand the challenges of managing under different resource conditions and water use scenarios and met with many people. Uh, we've used a lines of evidence approach to our work um, and our review as, as you are aware. Um, Blue Metric was hired by the ministry to undertake a jurisdictional and best practices review and assess selected vulnerable areas including water bottlers, uh, six areas with known vulnerability and the Chaplow area as a a background or control area. The Professional Geoscientists on Ontario um, also became involved uh, in the past year. Uh, they reviewed the Ministry's conclusions on water bottling, um, which were based on Blue Metrics work and the Ministry's work. Um, in our review, we've incorporated our own experience from source water protection and Ministry staff reviews at technical support in the various regions of many things. We've consulted with stakeholders and Indigenous communities, uh, looked at Environmental Commissioner's report, met with an external working group um, a couple of years ago, and some of you were involved. We met with water managers across the province, and we've done our own internal research. So what have we found? At a very high level, we found at, uh, Ontario's water resources um, are managed using the best scientific and management practices, are sustainable with a few local exceptions, and in the future possibly where population growth and resulting water demand and climate change may bring some uncertainty. Um, areas where there may be issues include takings using shallow groundwater sensitive to drought, um, irrigation takings using creek water to water crops. This occurs both seasonally and under drought conditions in some areas. And in the future, municipal supplies um, may be vulnerable to increasing demand as a result of population growth, which can uh, may overwhelm existing infrastructure. So it's an infrastructure rather than a resource issue for municipal water supply. In terms of water bottling, um, Blue Metric and, and the Ministry, uh, our, uh, our findings were, were, were similar. And uh, Professional Geoscience of, Ont of Ontario reviewed the Ministry's findings and agreed that they were um, reasonable. Uh, these were that bottled water takings are not impacting the sustainability of Ontario's groundwater resources or of other water users. Um, overall, water takings for bottling in Ontario are managed sustainably under existing legislation, regulation and guidance. And the science does not support the need to regulate water bottlers any different than other takers. So in 2020, we actually have completed our review um, and we went in June 2020 to consultation on our findings and 
and particularly on our proposed plan to move forward. So this information can be found on the Environmental Registry. The number to look for is 019-1340, and that includes uh, Bluemetric and the PGO reports, as well as our own findings and proposal. Um, what we've proposed it, it is three or four goals for improving water management in Ontario. These include establishing clear provincial priorities of water use, updating the approach to managing water takings in stressed areas. We're calling this area-based management or ABM, and you'll likely hear this term moving forward. Um, and making water taking data more accessible, including improving data and um, communication. So uh, the next talk actually uh, is a project that will be helping to enhance our data. Uh, the ministry also consulted on draft guidance for area-based management and priorities of water use in December. That posting has just closed. You can read the draft guidance, see the draft guidances on the Environmental Registry. Search for 019-2017. And this is policy and process guidance as opposed to technical for the most part. Um, also, um, the municipal uh, support for new and increased water bottling takings. The requirement for this has been adopted through legislation uh, in December 2020 through the Better for Business, Smarter for People Act. Um, and that will be um, enacted once the amendments are proclaimed. Other permit to take water program updates. The ministry has in 2020 centralized the permit approvals process. Uh, so no longer do the permits go to technical support in the regions. They go to uh, what used to be called approvals branch, an environmental assessment and permissions division. Um, so that will include the application processing review and the issuance of permits. The technical hydrogy and surface water reviews will still be done in the tech support offices in the regions uh, for complex sites. And uh, the ministry is working together to make sure this is delivered smoothly. Um, the Environmental Activity and Sector Registry, otherwise known as EASER, we recently consulted on proposed amendments. Uh, and there should be a decision on those moving forward. Those amendments include um, adopting seven-day pump tests as a new prescribed instrument under EASER, so they won't require permits anymore for seven days or less. Modifying the existing EASER requirements on construction site dewatering and road construction to remove restrictions that don't affect environmental outcomes and also amending easer so that uh, um, well development doesn't require a pump test approval. Um, so well development would be exempt from permits and uh, easers. Uh, there have also been amendments to the wells regulation that were adopted January 2020. They've come into force. Uh, these include modifying the insurance requirements for licensed well contractors to match the insurance policies available. Uh, so contractors must maintain general third-party liability insurance. The limit per occurrence is not less than $2 million, And the aggregate annual limit for claims paid out must be not less than two, uh, $5 million. Uh, we've updated well casing specifications to harmonize with international standards. So we now reference international standards and there's flexibility in the regulations so that when the standards are updated, they can be adopted without requiring a change to regulation. Um, for high yield wells, we've uh, removed the standards and added uh, flexibility for professional judgment. And all diameters of plastic well casing are now allowed if they confirm to ASTM F480, again, adding flexibility for professional judgment. Also, uh, the Wells Reg used to prevent screens from being placed at less than 2.5 meters below ground surface, uh, but to accommodate needs of dewatering wells and uh, test holes, this has been uh, changed. So in those specific cases, you can have a well screen of less than 2.5 meters below ground surface. 
a little update on the Provincial Groundwater Monitoring Network. Uh, we continue to deliver this with the Conservation Authorities and the Severn Sound Environmental Association. Recently, we've updated the groundwater chemistry and water level and rain data on the Ministry's website up to 2018. I know we're getting there. Um, you can find those on our website. Uh, also, PGMN work in progress. Uh, we're working to reduce the time involved in QAQCing the groundwater levels, so we'll be able to get that information out to you more quickly. Um, MNRF and MECP are updating the Whiskey Web Pro interface um, with the Whiskey Web portal, and we're also looking at the chloride concentrations and trends and sources in the PGMN wells. Um, in terms of uh, the, the Great Lakes groundwater work, we spoke quite a bit about this last year, um, but we continue to work with various researchers under uh, support from the Canada-Ontario Agreement. Um, Steve Frey either spoke to you this morning or will be speaking to you the, uh, during this workshop uh, on forecasting groundwater levels at a watershed scale. Um, and in fact, the two watersheds being looked at, Quinty and Long Point, were in part selected because they are areas where work was flagged as being needed under the water quantity review. Um, we continue to manage seven uh, PGMN climate change research stations where weather, surface water, and groundwater are being monitored. Uh, Dr. Levison at Guelph is looking at the one in southwestern Ontario in terms of uh, evolution of nutrients uh, in Lakehead and Nipissing University in, in northern Ontario are looking at two of the northern sites evaluating seasonal and daily water budget dynamics and groundwater surface water interactions in the watersheds. There are also two contaminated uh, groundwater research projects underway. We're working with RMC to develop a framework for estimating the number of likely sources of PFAS and groundwater in Ontario and of course mapping this. And Jim Roy will be speaking to you at this workshop on um, the work that he's doing that, that's funded through COA on groundwater transport of leachate from old closed landfills uh, to aquatic systems. Thank you.